Donald Trump's campaign organized a uh, basically a, a remembrance ceremony at Arlington. Uh, didn't really consult with the cemetery at all. Uh, didn't really invite members of the media. Just did their own thing. And the cemetery officials made it very clear to the campaign that the only folks who are allowed to take video and photographs in Section 60, which is where those who died in Iraq and Afghanistan are buried, only cemetery officials are allowed to take video and photo in that section of the cemetery. And that's for a very good reason, because it's frequently visited uh, by uh, surviving loved ones uh, of those who were killed in Iraq, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the Trump campaign thought this rule did not apply to them. And what is so clear at this point is that they organized this event specifically so they could claim that there was an event in Arlington that President Biden and Vice President Harris did not attend. It was the most cynical, selfish, uh, narcissistic thing that Trump could have done at this hallowed ground that honors uh, 400,000 uh, vet uh, veterans, uh, uh, killed service members and their families who are buried uh, there in the cemetery and who have given so much to our country and whom, you know, we should do everything we can to honor. And, and, and in the midst of this, a cemetery official goes to uh, let the campaign know to remind them, hey, you're not allowed to take photo and video here. That's our job. We do that in order to protect the privacy of families who are visiting the section. And they assaulted her and verbally abused her yeah. and then took the video that they made and turned it into a campaign ad that they put across their digital platforms, including on TikTok. Yeah. And I, I, I'll tell you what, I've been very angry. Uh, I'm trying not to cuss right now. I've been very angry. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, uh, all, my veteran fa uh, all, all my veteran friends and families yeah. have been angry because this is once again part of a long pattern in which Donald Trump blatantly disrespects service members and their sacrifices and those who are taking on the almost impossible task of dignifying uh, the the memory of those who are lost in their families. And it just, it, it really makes me angry. Yeah. And then since then, of course, he just makes everything worse, right? Blaming the Gold Star family, say he was set up by the Biden administration. I mean, Blaming Kamala Harris for I don't even know. I mean, it's just it's so disgusting that I like everything else. He never takes responsibility for anything. You know, Charlotte, what I was saying, because this is still so, you know, close to my heart. It says right on my pass to go see my mom and dad in Arlington. It says this vehicle pass is for visiting your loved one's gravesite only. It is not for visiting any other location within the cemetery. But you're right. right. They don't think any rules apply to them. It, it, it's not, you know, it doesn't need to say on here. It's not for going around and taking effing selfies, thumbs up selfies at other people's grave sites. I mean, it just the things you think you would have to tell a decent human being. Right. But Donald Trump is not one, is he? No, no, he's not. And I, you know, I'll tell you what, I, I served three years in the Army ceremonial unit in Arlington. So when you see pictures of soldiers carrying flag draped caskets and folding the flag, uh, you know, transporting urns to their final resting place. That was my unit. That's what we did. We trained yeah. to do that. And it was a constant, grueling, stressful process. That was three years every day, day in and day out, in which we were training for that specific purpose. And, you know, when I look back on that time, here's what I remember most vividly. Most of us were, were young, young people between ages 18 and 23 on average. Yeah. Uh, we partied. Uh, we had a good time on the weekends. We did our own thing. Uh, we might fight. We might argue. We might disagree with each other on politics. But the moment we stepped into that cemetery, all of that stuff went out the window. Yeah. Our, our entire focus was on ensuring that we were offering the most dignified experience that we could for all of these yeah. families Charlotte. traveling to Arlington from across the country. Yeah, I was just going to say, I remember like it was yesterday, it was 40 years ago, my dad got the horse-drawn carriage and the, you know, the 21 gun salute. And I remember, because I was sitting next to my mom, her them handing her the, the flag and the precision and, and just, 
dignity and sacredness they do all of it with you know it, it's it's not just our sacred ground because you lost friends and i my parents are there it's it's america's yeah. sacred ground right oh yeah oh yeah and every memorial day or almost every memorial day i i visit the cemetery i'll visit my friend's graves i'll visit the graves of people that uh, i admire or, or people i looked up to you know this is this is this really is such hallowed ground and there may be in my, in fact, I'm just going to say it. I'm not, I'm not even going to qualify the statement. There is no more hallowed ground than Arlington National Cemetery in our country. Yeah. Not the Capitol, not the White House, uh, not anywhere else. It's Arlington. Arlington is where nothing else matters except for those who gave their all, literally gave their all mm -hmm. for uh, our country and in service to Americans.